Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part three of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today we're going to take one of our clone characters from the last episode and give him custom animations and attacks. We'll start with importing in or creating animations for our character, we'll talk about the moveset framework in UFE, and we'll create every detail for our custom attacks. So I'm going to start by grabbing our custom character Shrigma that we made in the last episode. Shrigma was graciously provided by the game dev YouTuber Bargy for this tutorial. So check him out if you want to see Shrigma in his native first-person shooter environment, but for now, we want to get some animations to make Shrigma's zany design fit well in our fighting game. So let's head into UFE and see exactly what we need. If we open up Shrigma's character file here, we'll see that all of his moves are based off something called a stance. And I've got it set to the Mechanim bot right now. We can load the stance file to take a closer look at it. First of all, having various stances allows your character to switch between move sets throughout the game. As for what the stance actually contains, there are two parts. First are the basic moves, which is stuff like moving forward, moving back, crouching, jumping, and so on. Just general things every character needs. Then we have a second category of moves, which is just dedicated to the attacks. In the basic moves category, we can tell that there are a ton of animations that are needed for each and every character in UFE, like getting hit while standing, getting hit with medium, heavy, or weak attacks, and so on. So instead of creating this all from scratch, I'm going to highly suggest you follow this tutorial and just duplicate one of the stances that are already made and use that as a base. Then we'll swap out the animations and attacks that we want to. So to make a dedicated moveset for Shrigma, we need to go to UFE, Demos, Resources, 2D Fighter, Movesets, and then just duplicate Mechanim Bots by pressing Control D. We're going to call this Shrigma, and now we can have it load Shrigma's moveset. Now that Shrigma's moveset is separate from Mechanim Bots, we can start importing some animations. To get some pre-made animations, I'll upload our rigged Shrigma model to Mixamo. I'll edit the fighting idle animation, get a goofy walk forward, and a walk back animation. We'll also add in a custom jump. For a jump, UFE transitions between four animations. First, we have the takeoff, which is where the character goes from the ground up into the air. Jump straight is the idle animation that loops from the bottom of their jump to the apex of their jump. Then fall straight is the animation that plays from the apex of the character's jump to falling to the ground. And then finally landing is when they actually land on the ground. I'd like to be able to grab something like this joyful jump and chop it up into those four states. However, actual movement in the animation can cause several issues in UFE. UFE should do all the jump movements for you, while the animations stay in place. So let's look for jump animations that keep this principle. Finally, I'll grab a heavy attack from Mixamo. I'm also going to import my rigged Shrigma FBX file that is in an idle pose to Blender and make an attack where the fighter attacks with their mushroom. When making an attack divided into three parts, the attack startup, some lingering impact frames, and then the recovery. I'll also export this as an FBX file. I'll head over to Demos, Shared Assets, Characters, Shrigma, Animations, and drop all of my FBX files with animations in here. Once that's done, I'm going to select them all and go to the inspector and make sure that all of them use the humanoid rig. Then I'm going to go to animation and make sure each of the animations are named correctly. Once that's done, I'm going to open up all the FPX files and select all the animations. Then I'll press Ctrl D to separate all of them from the FBX models. With the animations separated, we can get rid of the additional FBX files. Before we start on any attacks, I'm going to make sure that swapping out basic moves for Shrigma with other animations works fine. So I'll just find what I want to swap out and drag in the proper animation. 
Now at the end of this, I need to make sure to go down here and click apply changes, or these changes will not be saved. It seems like our animations are almost good. I just need to go to the fighting idol animation and mess with its root transform settings. And here we go. With the basic moves out of the way, now it's time to move on to the attacks. If we take a look at the attacks and special moves, we'll see that each of them have a special move file component for each of the moves, and it has a specific move editor. To create new moves, I recommend rearranging your windows to how we set them for hitbox editing in the last episode. By looking around the file structure, we can see that the moves folders are right next to the character files. So for Shrigma here, I'm going to make a new moves folder just for him. And then in this, I'm going to create UFE, a move file. It kicked me out of there, so I'm going to hop in and name this properly. And I'm going to call it the cross punch from Mixamo, because that's what we're starting with. In the move editor, you'll see a massive array of options to customize your move, from making it a chain move, from giving it specific particle effects, sound effects, text effects, by making it change the player's stance, by making it shove forces on the players, make it hide body parts, go slow motion, we even have super armor, invincibility frames, it can be a projectile, or your move can even be, let's see where it is, it can be a character assist move. There are so many different options here. But don't get overwhelmed, we won't go over all of that right now. Instead, we have a playlist of other tutorials detailing most of these options and advanced moves that I'll link to at the end of this video. Also remember that we have live documentation connected to each of these question marks. So if you're ever stuck, just click one of these and you'll get help. And if you're stuck even then, just go to our forms. For this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to make a basic standing medium punch and a standing heavy punch. For those basic moves, all we have to set up is the move's general information, how it works with gauges, what its animation is, what its active frames are, what its condition is, and what its input is. So let's get started. For general info, we have the move name and description, which is all we need here. Before we worry about how our move interacts with the gauge, let's actually get it running and drag in the right animation. I'm going to open this up, and for this, I'm going to run over to my Shrigma animation and drag in the cross punch. Now down here, we can have a character preview by typing in Shrigma here and adding his prefab. Let's make sure it's the prefab, not the model. And click animation preview. Now once we're in the animation preview, we can slide this slider here to watch the animation go frame by frame, but you'll notice it's not working super great. We can reload that, and then even when we do, we only have 14 frames of the attack. Um, usually this is by default. What you have to do is go up to speed here and click apply because it's trying to figure out what speed to play your animation at, and if this isn't clarified to the engine, it won't really know how many frames your specific move has. So now that that's there, we have that wonderful cross punch. And before we forget about it, I'm going to hop up to gauge, new gauge options, and just make this move whenever it's played, fill up a bit of the player's gauge. Let's say 9%. Bam, that's more than 9%. <laughs> Whoops. Now if we put this move in the game right now, Shrigma would deal no damage to another player because the game doesn't know when to apply damage to an opponent or how much damage to apply. We adjust all of that in this active frames category. We're going to make a new hit. You can have several of these in an attack. And the first thing we get to decide here is when Shrigma attacks in this move. We have several startup frames, frames when the move is active, and frames when our character recovers. So I'm going to scroll through our animation here and see what's best for that. It seems like these first 29 frames are him starting up the move. Then, while he has his fist out, we'll have that be the active frames of the move. So 29 to 36, and the rest of this is him recovering from the move. Now then, we know when he deals damage, the next question is where he'll deal damage. 
For this, we can create one or more hurt boxes. And these hurt boxes are the areas where if an opponent is hit, damage will be applied to them. So let's see, what fist is this? That's his right fist, I think. Yeah, so body part, right hand. And this blue circle is the hurt box. I'm going to put it at a 0. Point, eh, maybe 0. 0.7 size. And then since this is a heavy attack, uh, it's only attacking the middle of a body, and it's hit strength, I'm going to make it heavy. And then finally down here is where we adjust the damage for the attack. So I say damage on hit, let's make this scary. 15% damage on hit, 3% damage on block. Now, under damage options is how long the enemy is going to be stunned if they're hit by this. So, we want to make sure the stun is longer than the recovery frames, so you can kind of combo with it, possibly. Maybe not for a heavy attack, but let's just do uh, 15 recover. Well, nah, so they can't immediately attack you. Let's do 30, 30 hit stun on hit, and... Uh, 10 hits done on block. Force options and stage reactions and pooling options here all deal with character movement when they're hit by this attack, and we don't have to worry about that right now, but what we do have to worry about is the blockable area of this attack. If there is no blockable area related to this attack, then the attack cannot be blocked. So we're gonna make sure the blockable area, or when they're able to block this move, is a bit bigger than when the move is actually active, and same with the hitbox. We want to make the block box basically bigger than the actual fist here. And then we have a 0.7 radius for that circle, we'll make a 1 radius for this circle, and yeah, that should be good to go. Then we want to finally move on from the attack details to the attack conditions. So first of all, player conditions here, we want to say what state can this move be thrown out in, and by default it says when you're standing anywhere within the opponent's distance, and then if they're standing, moving forward, or back, then I want them to be able to throw this heavy punch. Then the next condition for it to run is under input, and we're going to make it button execution, on button press, button 3. And then to end it all, we actually want to scroll down to the bottom, and set up these AI definitions. We can auto-detect most of these, and then um, this way the AI will actually use this move when controlling Trigma. With the cross punch done, I'm going to quickly make the headbutt here. Since the headbutt is faster in a medium attack, I'm just going to make it a bit weaker than the cross punch. When the character's moves are completed, go back to your character's character file, access its move set and just drag in your new moves to replace the old ones. As you can see here, we have the Mushroom Whack and Cross Punch working and blockable. Now for one final touch, just to make the tutorial preview look a bit nicer, I'm gonna make an alternate costume for Shrigma by duplicating his prefab and giving that prefab a new material. And then I'll add that prefab to the character file as an alternate costume, so I can make my moveset testing a bit more visually interesting. Because there is a lot of testing and special moves still needed to make this a full moveset. But don't worry, we have plenty of video resources linked here to help you make your dream character. When you're done with that, we'll get into the basics of how AI opponents work in part 4. I'll see you then. Bye!